All right, what's up guys? I'm actually in the middle of updating this store to Shopify 2.0. This is a real life store, lmbambini.com.au. And we're gonna be upgrading from the old version of Prestige to the newer one, that is compatible with Shopify 2.0. And I thought this was a great opportunity to show you exactly what new features they will be getting uh, with this newer version of the same theme, right? So I can show you a side by side. So it's really easy for you to understand. And I'm not going to cover all of the features of Shopify 2.0, just the main ones, the ones that really stand out and that they'll be able to use right away. Because you know, I want to keep this video short and to the point. Okay, so starting from the home page, there actually isn't much of a difference on the home page between the old theme and the new one. We have all of the same sections available, and I've already pretty much recreated the home page exactly as it was on the old theme. So let's not hang around on the home page much longer. And I want to talk about the most exciting, the biggest feature of Shopify 2.0, which is sections everywhere. So sections are well, these sections that we have on the home page, you can drag them around, right? Um, you can add new sections if you want, and you can make this page as long as you want it to be. So on the old theme, we obviously we don't have sections everywhere. This is how uh, Shopify always worked. You had sections on the home page, which you could drag around, but on other page types like the product page, the collection page, static pages or the blog, you did not have dynamic sections, you only had like two or three sections that the theme developer has provided you with, but you can't add your own, right? We just have the product page, which is like this main section here. And then we have the recommendations, which is you may also like. And then we have recently viewed products. That's it. That's all we can do with this uh, product page template. If we want to add something else, below here to talk about the product more, we can't, um, you would probably need to hire a web developer to do that. Now let's take a look at this same page, the same product page in the 2.0 theme. Now, here we have the button that is add section, just the same as on the home page, and it gives us access to all of the sections that are available on the home page. So now, this feature is called sections everywhere and we can add any section we want on any page. So let's say for example, that I have some extra images of these shoes, um, that maybe I want to add a slideshow with, um, with some models wearing these shoes, then I can add the slideshow section, I can drag it directly below the main product section. So it doesn't have to be below that you may also like or anything. I can also reorder these if I want to you know, and I can add some images in here. If I had extra information about the product that I wanted to talk about, then I could also add something in like the rich text with image section, or maybe the testimonials is another good example, directly under here. Yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Uh, we have the product and then we have like a few testimonials like that. But let's get rid of these for now. The other thing that I want to talk about that is kind of related to sections everywhere is the fact that we now have draggable blocks inside the main product section, the main product information here, we can actually remove things that we don't want. So for example, if we don't want the description, we can shorten it like that. I mean, obviously, you would probably want the description, we have the share buttons here, if you want to disable those, then that's very easy, you can just remove that block. We can also add various blocks that are available to us here. For example, the inventory count, if that's important for your store, and it tells you how many are in stock, right? And we can drag this around, we can drag the name of the product around. For example, a good example is when you want the buy buttons above the description, if you have kind of a long description, you might want uh, this kind of layout where you have the size, the quantity, the buy buttons, and then the description below so that it doesn't push all of this down. Right, so just a few examples of how that can be used. And you know, obviously, we don't have any of those options here. This is all quite static. We can't reorder this in any way on the old theme. Another thing that I want to point out is that sections everywhere is not limited to just the product page. Here we have a collection page, and I'm using some sections on it. This was actually 
one of the reasons why they wanted to upgrade to Shopify 2.0 was because they wanted uh, some kind of landing page for the baby's collection. What they sent me was this just as an example. Obviously, this doesn't really match our theme and we don't have these kind of sections. This circle in the center is not really like something you do in web design. It looks like this was done by uh, a graphic designer that does something for print. But we're going to look at this design and kind of see what we can do within our theme with the sections that are available to us and um, and create something that serves a similar purpose. So as you can see, I've got the rich text with image sections here as kind of a banner for the baby's uh, landing page. Then we have a featured um, brand with a little a little quote about that brand. And then we just have some extra information section here, maybe another brand and then finally a call to action to shop the baby's collection, which would open up all of the like the actual collection with all of the products. And at this point, I just have to mention that I'm not very happy with this, like I'm not very happy with the amount of settings that are available in prestige theme, like I would have liked for this to be uh, much larger, maybe like a heading, maybe we can turn this into a button. But unfortunately, there really isn't like enough settings to do something like that in prestige theme. I think the intent is that it's quite a minimalist theme. And uh, so they keep it really simple. In other themes in themes like turbo, for example, in themes like um, broadcast, they have a lot more options for customizing the look of each section. And you're able to build a much more complex layout. It's much more flexible as well. Now you may have been wondering, am I really making this uh, baby content right for the default collection? Is this being applied across all collections? Or am I somehow applying this only to the baby collection? And the answer is that I'm going to be using templates for this currently, it is done on the default collection, as you can see. But uh, luckily in Shopify 2.0, we can create custom templates for every different type of page or collection or product or anything. Let me show you what I mean. So templates are here, All right? When you open this up, it's like this. And we can go into collections and see all our collection templates. Now we have this create template button, as you can see. And we don't have this in the old theme, in the old theme, when we go into collections, for example, we see a couple of templates that we had this one was from an app. This is just one I created that did not have an image. But all these templates had to be created in code, you might have seen under pages, almost everybody has the contact template. And this adds a page with a contact form, right? So you would create a page through your regular, you know, through online store and then pages. And then inside those pages, you can select the template, right? So for the contact us, you would select the contact template. Now, this particular theme also came with a FAQ template, for example, and that creates an accordion type drop down thing uh, for you know, FAQs. But generally in the old Shopify, you had templates, right? But these were the templates that the theme developer provides you with, you could not create your own templates, you were limited to this list of templates that you had. And if you wanted more templates, you had to hire a developer to make them for you. Now we can easily create templates ourselves. So I'm going to click create template here. And what I'm actually going to do is create a new template called baby collection. And it's going to be based on the default collection. So it's going to duplicate what I've done just now. We're going to create that template. And then what we can do is we switch back to the default collection template. And we would delete all of those things that we just added. Okay, so we would remove this section, we would remove this section, and turn it back into like a regular collection page, right. And let's save that. And now we would have two templates, we have our default collection template, and we have our baby collection template with our baby content. And then inside of collections, when we go into products collections, then we will be able to go into baby and actually apply the baby collection template instead of the default collection template here. Now when I open this right now, it's not going to show the baby collection because that theme is unpublished. But as soon as we publish the theme, 
that, temp uh, that template is going to become available here. So that's just a quick overview of templates. Now, I have actually made an entire video on templates in Shopify 2.0. And in that video, I show you a lot of examples um, using the website Allbirds. If you're familiar with it, they make wool sneakers, very uh, popular and large e-commerce store, and they're actually built on Shopify. So yeah, if you're interested in how to use templates effectively, then I recommend watching this video on my channel. One last thing I want to talk about is app embeds or how easy it is to add apps to your store in Shopify 2.0. So previously, we had to often install code directly into the theme. So you may be familiar with this kind of thing where you install an app and then it gives you some instructions. It tells you that you need to copy and paste this snippet inside of your theme.liquid at the bottom right above the end body tag. Um, this is another app, right? This is a filtering app. If you installed a reviews app like Judge Me, then you may have had to add Judge Me. Um, this is that filtering app again. Various apps would be installed directly into your themes code. And that's not ideal, right? Even if, okay, some apps recently They've been doing this automatically, right? You click a button and it automatically will add this by itself into your theme. That's still not very safe. That's still not very clean uh, because, you know, you don't want apps adding random scripts into your theme files and then you uninstall the app and you're not sure if it automatically cleans up all of these scripts or if they're left over after you uninstall the app. Um, and I'm not talking about these apps in particular. These apps are pretty good, actually, pretty like quality apps. I'm talking about the concept in general of the fact that apps write certain includes directly into your theme files. Whereas now, all you have to do is toggle this on, right? So underneath theme settings, when you go to theme settings, and then you see the general theme settings, the global settings, then you go to app embeds, and you can simply turn on the core snippet for these apps. So for example, judge me product reviews, we're just going to turn on the core snippet. And that's all we really need to do. When we uninstall the app, this will just be gone, there will be nothing left in your theme. Um, and you obviously, you also don't have to mess around with your theme files, which is not very safe, you could accidentally make a typo, delete something, you know, so we toggle this core snippet on, right. And then the next part of adding an app is that we can add things as blocks. So previously, if you wanted stars, like here, like review stars for judge me, you would have to go into your theme, find the h1, the code that is outputting your heading, and your price, and you know, actually find that code and paste in the snippet underneath that code, right, the snippet that outputs the stars. And that was also kind of not very easy to do if you are not familiar with HTML. So now all we need to do is we can add those stars as a block. So here under the theme blocks, we also have app blocks, which are dynamically pulled in from any app that you have installed. So here we're going to use the preview badge stars. And we have it as a block. And there the stars appear and we can actually drag them into any position we want. So we want them right under the title and the price. So we can drag them here. The next thing that you might also want to add, uh, if you're installing a review app like judge me is a section for the larger for the actual like where someone can leave a review, right. And we also have um, app sections available. And uh, here we're going to add in the actual review widget in judge me that's what it's called. This is the main one review widget in different apps, they will be called different names. But here we go, we get this section that's simply called apps. And we can see that inside that we have the judge me review widget. And of course, like with anything else, we can reposition that so that you know, we have we have it above the product recommendations, for example, so that people notice it more, or we can have it instead of this testimonial section that's built into the theme, we can just have the uh, reviews coming from the app directly under the product like that. That makes sense to me, I think. And you know, there's no limit for how many um, app blocks you can add, you can, for example, add an Instagram feed right from from another app that I have installed, which is called 
covet pics, which loads in Instagram, but I think there's some extra install to do for that. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about just because it's quite important, and you might be in this situation as well, is the things that we actually lost that were custom coded into this theme. Now, if you haven't had a developer work on your store and your theme is completely stock standard, um, then you won't have this problem. But we actually have this problem that I made code changes to the old theme, right? And some of these I made these changes a couple of years ago, or maybe maybe one year ago, but I've been working with this store for a while. And um, we even forgot that these things are custom coded, and uh, not part of the theme. So for example, in this theme, there's only a color, a solid color background on this announcement bar, I'm I made the uh, setting for there to be a background image. The next thing, the most important one is that I built this custom section for them, the image carousel. The theme actually does not come with this. And I'm going to have to get the code for that. And hopefully, it's just a simple copy and paste into the new theme. Sometimes, sometimes it is sometimes it isn't, you know, uh, depending on how much they've rebuilt the theme in the updated version. This image grid section is also something that I built. Like my point here is just that if you've had a developer work on your theme, just be conscious of the fact that if you upgrade to a newer theme, you could lose those changes. And you might have even forgot <laughs> about changes that they did for you that wasn't actually part of the theme. Usually, if the theme hasn't really changed dramatically, like if the sections haven't been fully rebuilt, redesigned, then it's often just a copy and paste of the code belonging to this section, you know, into the new theme. But sometimes if the theme's been significantly rebuilt, then it's almost like building a section from scratch, which is obviously extra time, extra hours and money. So just take that into account when updating to Shopify 2.0. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you found value in this video. It wasn't supposed to be like a full tutorial. It was just an example of some things that have changed on a particular store. I thought it might be useful to show you a real store rather than the theoretical, you know, hypothetical stuff I show you on my development store. Anyway, if you're interested in Shopify 2.0, you should check out this video for filters. You should check out this video for uh, how to use templates this one for everything about collections and it's kind of related to templates as well. And yeah, this video about meta fields, if you're going to be using meta fields, kind of old, there's going to be a full Shopify 2.0 summary video coming up soon. If you haven't subscribed, of course, subscribe, leave a like on this video. And let me know what else you want a video on. That's it for today. See you next time.